got a submission here from Braiders 3K. And Braiders 3K, if or anybody else, if you happen to have seen a video go up on my channel uh, with, as a Braiders 3K black box log and then like disappear five seconds later, ten seconds later, it's because I actually queued up uh, your posts on the Betaflight thread. And then after I did a review of it, I realized you had done a more up, more recent post on my video logs thread. So I was like, well, there's no sense responding to the earlier thing, and I took it down again. So I've actually reviewed your log twice now, uh, but the first one, eh, you moved on. So there you go. Uh, but if you, anybody saw that and was confused, that's why. You're running Betaflight 251 with a Nays Rev 6, little b 20 amps, Hellfire 2204, 2300 motors, 4 kilohertz. Yeah, 4 kilohertz on a Nays. Who would have thought we'd see the day? Boris is single-handedly undermining the entire F3 market. F3 manufacturers hate him. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's something, though. Yeah, using 4045 Dow triples. Um, if you were on a higher KV motor, I would advise you to watch out for the rev limit on the uh, 330, the F330 processor and the little B20. But I think on a 2300 KV motor, you should be okay even on a 4-inch prop, so never mind that. No, okay. Now, tune your P's, but you're struggling with the rest, and the black boxes don't look great either, though the quad seems to fly nice. Good. Hey, yeah, don't listen to anything I have to say here. Quad flies nice. If you like the way it flies, and the video looks good, and you're happy, ah, forget it. Just go fly. Just go fly. Don't, don't, be, don't be a weirdo like me where tuning is enjoyable on its own merit, right? Just, just, be, just be happy. Just get it run while you still can. <laughs> you get oscillation on hard banks that you would like to get rid of. So that's that's a tough one, and you're doing everything right. You're running four kilohertz, you're running beta flight, you have great ESCs with strong braking. You're doing everything right. So we'll see what we can do, but but may have may, may just have to accept some of that. We may not be able to have the the perfect two. Let's have a look at your black box. As always, we'll start with your gyros. Gyros look good, and you know, guys, I do want to say, you know, every time you go to the doctor, what do they do? They put you on the scale, they take your pulse, they take your blood pressure every time. And I kind of feel like looking at these gyros is like that. Most of the time, there's nothing to see. But hey, you check it, and if there is something to see, this is a good place you're going to find out if you have a problem. So in this case, nothing to see. Moving on. Let's take a look at roll. If we look at roll... I like what I see so far. I see that the P term is active. It is moving up and down. It doesn't seem to cross over into sinusoidal isolations or oscillations. Oscillations, what am I saying? Sinusoidal oscillations. But I see it constantly moving. Sometimes I see surges like this. That's good. If that got worse, it would become oscillations, but it doesn't. And I don't see it just sort of sitting there like this little subsection here all the time, kind of napping on the job, right? I want to see it moving and working. I don't want to see it just sitting there doing nothing. Now, if we keep looking, we can see here we start to get a little bit of trouble. This kind of spike here, and then it goes into a little bit of a, a, a sort of damped ringing Notice that the magnitude of these oscillations sort of arcs downward like this. That is a, a P-term oscillation. Notice that they're regular spacing, mostly regular spacing. So the frequency is kind of regular, and the oscillation goes strong and weaker. And that's a P-term oscillation. Now that by itself is not a problem. Who knows what was happening in this flight at this moment. But that's the kind of thing I'm looking for is like little alarm bells that maybe were on the edge. That's okay, though. I like being on the edge. That feels like a good place to be for this tune. I prefer an acro build for sure. Racing build for sure. You got a race car, you're going to squeal the tires. The D term is not hyperactive and is, is reasonably subdued. I'm looking at the magnitude of the D term here. It is usually maybe less than half the P term. I don't see any times when the D term is really flipping out. 
Here we're doing something more aggressive. The throttle is up, the P term is working, and the D term gets active, but it doesn't flip out. Here is an example of something that might be D term being a little more active than I would like. See how the D term is now uh, uh, all over the place, big magnitude, okay? Now, again, it's just one tiny slice. I'm just pointing it out where if I saw a lot of this, I would think, oh, it, it's too much and maybe we need to lower our D gain or something. But it's very seldom and mostly the D term is just humming along here. I like that a lot. Here, P term gets more active. D term gets more active too, but it doesn't flip out. doesn't get crazy. That's good. I like what I'm seeing here on roll. I feel like your balance of D and P is right about where it needs to be. The P term is very often right here. See, this is what I like to see in a P term. Do you see how the P term is active here? It's surging up and down. It's doing its job, right? But it's not crossing over into this crazy oscillation. Now, if you have oscillations on prop wash and you want to bring those in a little, drop your P gain a little. Okay, so here we're starting to get maybe a little a little closer to oscillation. This is more of a sharply tuned copter, which is going to be a little more likely to oscillate in challenging situations. And now here I would say this is kind of over the edge. I wouldn't like to see this very often. But it's a very subjective thing, and that's why I can't give you a hard answer as to what's right or what's wrong. Uh, you know, if you have a sports car, Right, some people might like the suspension to be really stiff, and some people might like it to be a little softer. And maybe their lap times are, are you know, the car doesn't have quite as much uh, turning ability. It doesn't turn quite as sharply, and their lap times aren't quite as good. Uh, but you know, you have to drive the car every day, right? So you're going to make it drive how you like. So there's some pilots who have more tolerance for this kind of thing, and some pilots who has, have less tolerance for it. And that's a matter of opinion. I don't think you're. I don't think anything I'm seeing here is in the range of like, oh, this is bad. No, you should fix this. This looks really good, frankly. And whether you want to change things is just a matter of of your preference. If you want to get rid of those prop wash oscillations, I would drop your P gain down by a notch or two. Let's see where you're at on your P gain. Rewrite your roll P is at six. And what if you were to take it down to, you know, 5.8? Now, I would bet if you took it down to 5.8, you would not notice a difference at all in flight characteristics, but those prop wash oscillations would be slightly reduced. And if you were to take it down to 5.6, you probably still wouldn't notice a difference, but you might start to. And if you were to take it down to like 5.4, I'm pretty sure if you paid attention, you would notice a difference. So somewhere in there, there's a spot where it's still sharp enough and responsive enough for you to like how it flies, but the prop wash is a little bit reduced. You could also try tweaking D, but I'm of the opinion that the days where we solve prop wash by raising D are kind of behind us. And it feels to me like you're more likely to get yourself in trouble by raising D than you are to fix problems. P is so good in the latest versions of, Bert, of beta flight with four kilohertz and eight kilohertz. And D is just seems like for whatever reason, you don't need as much D as you used to. And it's very easy to mess things up. So I feel like in the latest versions of beta flight, D is, it's a little, a background hint of a spice that's making everything, bringing it all together, but it doesn't need to be very dominant. The P really needs to be the most dominant thing, okay? Let's take a look at your other axes, but I'm, I'm basically just going to apply this same logic looking at the other axes. Well, pitch for sure. So D on pitch is looks like it's less active than on roll. Notice that the magnitude of the D term is usually very small. Here it gets a little more active. That's good. I like this. This looks fine. Most of the time it's it's quite small. So here it's getting a little out of line, but you're at a higher throttle. So that's sort of normal. No problem there. P, you don't see a lot of surging in the P, do you? The red trace, the P trace. 
you don't see a lot of surging. Here, it's getting a little active and your throttle is high. But a lot of other times, the P term is here, just kind of loping along. And I might like to see it working a little more. So it feels like if this were my copter, I would raise the P gain a little more on pitch. I don't really ever see it get into oscillations. Look at, look at like right here. It's just kind of do 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 do. It's not surging. It's just, it's it's just a straight line. And I would rather see the P term surging a little bit, kind of like a horse pulling at the reins, right, right, as opposed to just trotting along, taking its time, being cool. I don't want that out of my P term. So I feel like this P gain could come up a little bit on pitch. And if you want to find a spot in your trace where you have a prop wash oscillation and confirm that it's not on the P on the pitch axis but on the roll axis which it probably is and then if we look at yaw D on yaw is almost non-existent and that's fine yaw doesn't need a lot of D and P on yaw has very small up and down waves but almost no sort of spiky oscillations like this so it feels like P on yaw could probably come up a little since normally we see at least a little bit of noise on the yaw P term. Not so much surging, but kind of spiky noise. And this one looks to have not very much of that. So it feels like the P could come up a little. The P on yaw is 7.5. You might take that up to 8.5 or even 9. Now another thing you asked about is you have a very active uh, I term. That's hard to judge these days. It's very hard to judge I term just by looking at the black box trace. This, this what you're seeing here, this doesn't look like a super active I term. It's moving relatively slowly down and up. But if we look at a case where like you're in a flip like this and there's a lot of oscillation, it is normal to see the I term jumping around like that. And uh, I don't know why you're not zeroing the I term. I think Boris moved that out of air mode and into acro plus maybe but um nothing i'm seeing it throughout your i term really jumps out at me as unusual but i'll tell you the way i tune i term is i watch my videos in playback and i watch for a case where i go into a turn and halfway through the turn or maybe as i exit the turn the copter kind of rocks to the outside of the turn and that tells me I need a little bit more eye gain on that axis. Or I look for a case where I'm in a turn, I'm moving through the turn, and the copter is kind of wobbling on the pitch axis a little. That's what I look for. Or you can punch the throttle hard and then chop the throttle, and if the copter doesn't maintain stability on an axis, usually it's the pitch axis, then again, you're going to want a little more eye term. But it's hard to tune eye term just by looking at black box without video and without just some, some trial and error. Your eye gains are. 30 and 30. In my experience, I usually end up with eye gains higher than that, on, and I fly rewrite as well. I usually end up with eye gains on pitch around, I think, 50 to 60, and on roll around 40 to 50. Don't, tell, don't, don't quote me on that, but that's where I think they usually are. So I usually end up with them higher than that. Uh, that's, that's a matter of some, some discussion, but I don't think your eye gain is too high, so I think you're good. I feel like your tune is really, it, your tune could be somebody's perfect tune. You could tweak it a little bit. I would tweak it a little bit, but that's just a particular way that I like my copters to fly and feel. Uh, if you like how it feels, just fly it. Have a good time. Hope that's helpful. Happy flying.